Assalamualaikum everybody, welcome back to another video. As promised, today we are doing a reaction video and we are reacting to nine shocking facts from the Quran. Side note, does anybody know any remedies for like back pain? Because my back has been killing me all week and it's like really bad. So if anybody knows, please drop it in the comments because I need something, okay? So I know that you guys have been wanting a reaction video. Um, I will say these are a little bit harder for me just because since I record on my phone and then I watch it on the computer when I pause it, like it's just a whole lot of editing, which I'm still getting used to, but I am trying my best. So if you guys see any like weird editing, I apologize. <laughs> I am trying, I'm still learning, but anyways, let's get to the video. Ever since the dawn of mankind, we have sought to understand nature and our place in it. In this quest for the purpose of life, many people have turned to religion. Most religions are based on books claimed by their followers to be divinely inspired without any proof. Islam is different because it is based upon reason and proof. There are clear signs that the book of Islam, the Quran, is the word of God and we have many reasons to support this claim. There are scientific and historical facts found in the Quran which were unknown to the people at the time and have only been discovered recently by contemporary science. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it here really quick. Um, and I will say, I have read some of the things in the Quran. Um, obviously, I'm still making my way through the Quran. Um, but some of the things that I've read, it's like, to me, it's so shocking how people like still won't accept that the Quran is the word of God because the things that are there, there's like no way people could have known them back then. But anyways, let's watch it. The Quran is in a unique style of language that cannot be replicated. This is known as the inimitability of the Quran. There are prophecies made in the Quran and by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which have come to pass. The following are some facts found in the Quran. Number one, origin of life. Water is essential for all living things. We all know that water is vital to life, but the Quran makes a very unusual claim. We made every living thing from water. Will they not believe? In this verse, water is pointed out as the origin of all life. All living things are made of cells. We now know that cells are mostly made up of water. For example, 80% of the cytoplasm, basic cell material, of a standard animal cell is described as water in biology textbooks. The fact that living things consist mostly of water was discovered only after the invention of the microscope. In the deserts of Arabia, the last thing someone would have guessed is that all life came from water. Number two, iron. Iron is not natural to the earth. It did not form on the earth, but came down to earth from outer space. This may sound strange, but it's true. Scientists have found that billions of years ago, the earth was stuck by meteorites. These meteorites were carrying iron from distant stars, which had exploded. The Quran says the following on the origin of iron. We sent down iron with its great inherent strength and its many benefits for humankind. God uses the words sent down for iron. It is clear from the verse that iron is not an earthly material, but was sent down for the benefit of humanity. The fact that iron came down to earth from outer space is something which could not be known by the primitive science of the 7th century. Number 3. Sky's Protection The sky plays a crucial role in protecting the earth. The sky protects the earth from the lethal rays of the sun. If the sky did not exist, then the sun's radiation would have killed off all life on earth. It also acts like a blanket wrapped around earth, 
to protect it from the freezing cold of space. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it right here really quick. Um, I actually had somebody who commented in one of my videos um, saying that one of the contradictions in the Quran was about the days and how long it took because one of the texts says sky and I think it says earth or land or something like that. And I just want to say when you're in the sky, it does not mean that that's referring to the heavens. Like an airplane is in the sky, not in heaven. So little, little tip, you know, let's keep watching. If this temperature was to reach Earth, then the planet would freeze over instantly. The sky also protects life on Earth by warming the surface through a heat retention, greenhouse effect, and reducing temperature extremes between day and night. These are some of the many protective functions of the sky. The Quran asks us to consider the sky in the following verse. We made the sky a protective ceiling, and yet they are turning away from our signs. The Quran points to the sky's protection as a sign of God. The protective properties of the sky were discovered by scientific research conducted in the 20th century. Number 4. Mountains The Quran draws our attention to a very important characteristic of mountains. Did we not make the earth as a resting place and the mountains as stakes? The Qur'an indicates that mountains have deep roots by using the word stakes to describe them. In fact, mountains do have deep roots, and the word stakes is an accurate description for them. A book titled Earth by geophysicist Frank Press explains that mountains are like stakes and are buried deep under the surface of the earth. Mount Everest, the height of which is approximately 9 kilometers above ground, has a route deeper than 125 kilometers. The fact that mountains have a deep stake like roots was not known until after the development of the theory of plate tectonics in the beginning of the 20th century. Number 5. Expansion of the Universe At the time when the science of astronomy was still primitive, the expansion of the universe was described in the Quran. And it is we who have built the universe with our creative power and keep expanding it. The fact that the universe is expanding was discovered in the last century. The physicist Stephen Hawking, in his book A Brief History of Time, writes, The discovery that the universe is expanding was one of the great intellectual revolutions of the 20th century. I just want to point out, in what other book? Or in what other holy scripture does it talk about this stuff? Like, ah, to me, oh my goodness, ah, it, it kind of makes me a little upset. <laughs> but I know, I know, I can't control what other people believe or anything, but it makes me a little upset. The things are so clear, and yet people can't seem to accept, or people can't seem to at least try to accept it you know they're like uh, their eyes are open but their hearts aren't let's keep watching the quran mentioned the expansion of the universe even before the invention of the telescope number six sun's orbit in 1512 the astronomer nicholas copernicus put forward his theory that the sun is motionless at the center of the solar system and that the planets revolve around it. The belief that the sun is stationary was widespread amongst astronomers until the 20th century. It is now a well-established scientific fact that the sun is not stationary but is moving in an orbit around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. The Quran mentions the orbit of the sun. It is he who created night and day the sun and the moon, each floating in its orbit. The Qur'an would have been wrong according to astronomers just a couple of decades ago, but we now know that the Qur'anic account of the sun's motion is consistent with modern astronomy. 
Number seven, the ocean. The Quran uses imagery to convey its deep meanings. Here it describes the state of the unbelievers as darkness out in a deep ocean, which is covered by waves, above which are waves, above which are clouds, layers of darkness, one upon the other. When one puts out his hand therein, he can hardly see it. Those God gives no light to, they have no light. It is commonly thought that waves only occur on the surface of the ocean. However, oceanographers have discovered that there are internal waves that take place below the surface of the ocean. These waves are invisible to the human eye and can only be detected by specialist equipment. The Quran mentions darkness in a deep ocean above which are waves, above which are waves, then clouds above that. This description is not only remarkable because it describes the internal waves in the ocean, but also because it describes darkness deep in the ocean. A human being can dive no more than 70 meters without breathing equipment. Light is present at that depth, but if we go down 1,000 meters, it is completely dark. Alright, I'm just gonna add this in here. So growing up, anytime that I would be like in a pool, like in a deep pool, if I was swimming from like the deep end to the shallow part, I would swim so fast because for some reason I thought that a shark was gonna grab me inside a pool. I just needed to add that because I honestly like, I'm like tearing up. And the reason why I'm tearing up is because like, to me, it's just, it's so clear, it's so evident, and it, it saddens me that people don't see it, you know? So, let's keep watching anyways. 1,400 years ago, there were no submarines or specialist equipment to discover internal waves or their darkness deep inside the oceans. Number eight. Lying in movement. There was a cruel, oppressive tribal leader named Abu Jahl who lived during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. God revealed a verse of the Quran to warn him. No, indeed, if he does not stop, we will seize him by the forehead, his lying, sinful forehead. Okay, I'm going to add here that this is probably one of my favorite facts just because, like, it's, it's been in the last like two, three centuries, not even, maybe like the last two centuries, where we've been finding out more about the human body. And the fact that this was known, and it's so clear on what it's saying, 1400 years ago, that's like, ugh. Let's watch. God does not call this person a liar but calls his forehead, the front part of the brain, lying and sinful, and warns him to stop. This verse is significant for two reasons. The first is that the front part of our brain is responsible for voluntary movement. This is known as the frontal lobe, a book titled Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology, which includes the results of research on the functions of this area states. The motivation and the foresight to plan and initiate movements occur in the anterior portion of the frontal lobes, the prefrontal area. The part of the brain that is responsible for movement is said to be seized if the man does not stop. Secondly, numerous studies have shown that this same region, frontal lobe, is responsible for the lying function of the brain. One such study at the University of Pennsylvania in which volunteers were asked questions during a computerized interrogation, it was found that when the volunteers were lying, there was significantly increased activity in the prefrontal and premotor cortices frontal lobe region. The front part of the brain is responsible for movement and lying. The Quran links movement and lying to this area. These functions of the frontal lobe were discovered with medical imaging equipment which was developed in the 20th century. Number nine, pain receptors. For a long time, it was thought that the sense of feeling and pain was dependent on the brain. However, it has been discovered that there are pain receptors present in the skin. Without these pain receptors, 
a person would not be able to feel pain. Consider the following verse on pain. We shall send those who reject our revelations to the hellfire. When their skins have been burned away, we shall replace them with new ones so that they may continue to feel the pain. God is almighty, all wise. God tells the people who reject his message that when they are in hell and their skins are burnt off so they can't feel any pain, he will give them new skins so that they continue to feel the pain. The Quran makes it clear that pain is dependent upon the skin. The discovery of pain receptors in the skin is a fairly recent discovery for biology. These are just some of the many facts found in the Quran. It is important to know that the Quran is not a book of science, but that it is consistent with science. To claim that scientific facts in the Quran are due to coincidence would be irrational. The best explanation is that God revealed this knowledge to the Prophet Muhammad. Just like the Quran contains knowledge about the natural world, it also contains information about the inner dimensions of our souls. It relates to our feelings, wants, and needs. The Quran informs us that we have a purpose in life and that following God's guidance will lead us to an inner peace in this life and paradise in the hereafter. And that rejection of his message will lead to depression in this life and hellfire after death. We shall show them our signs in the universe and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. Is it not enough that your Lord is the witness of all things? Wow. That last part got me with the whole like depression thing. Um, the Quran is the only holy scripture that not only talks about the stories of our prophets, peace be upon them all, um, but it also talks about things that are happening today. And I encourage people, even whether you're Muslim, whether you're non-Muslim, study the Quran, even if it's just to find out more facts about things that are happening today. Because although it's not a science book, it contains a lot of science that we're discovering today. So I encourage everybody to read up. Um, that's the first thing that Angel uh, Gabriel said to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was read. It doesn't matter if you don't think that the Quran is the word of God, but if you read it, you will see that there are things in there that are happening today, that there was no way that it could have been known 1400 years ago. Even if you just want to read it as a scientific book, but I encourage you to read it. You never know what you might find. And who knows, maybe you trying to find something scientific, you might find God. So I encourage you to read it. Even, even if you're not reading it to find God, read it, read it with an open mind, read it with an open heart. I am still getting through um, reading the Quran. I have been reading a lot. I try to read um, a chapter a day uh, and I everything that I read, I, I know a lot of people comment like, oh, you need to you need to turn to scholars in order to understand it. But scholars are just human beings too. If I'm able to understand what I'm reading, then great. If, if I don't understand something, then yeah, there's hadiths that I can turn to. Um, and there's people that I can also ask the understanding of. But so far, everything that I have read, I have been understanding. So I encourage you guys to read. Um, read up on the Quran and just pray that... God opens your heart and your mind in order to understand what you're reading, even if you're not looking for him. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. I enjoyed watching this so much. I hope that you guys will keep suggesting videos. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to comment what other videos you guys would like to see. And also share this video because 
the more that you share it, the more that the word of God gets spread. Make sure to also subscribe. And if you want to join Rosie's Corners Insiders, make sure to hit that join button. I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.